like to call the January 25th meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission to order at 7.01 and ask the Vice Chair to lead us in the call. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <coughs> Introduction of uh, commissioners. Uh, to my right, I have Bob Ladd representing the uh, Village District. Uh, um, Fred. I'm a Fred. <laughs> Fred McMahon representing the Rockingham uh, Planning Commission. And if he's going to take this seat, I'll wait. Hi, <laughs> Rick. And Rick Griffin representing Hampton. I am Nancy St Stiles, the um, newly elected chair representing Hampton. This is um, Dean Merrill representing member at large. large. Um, we have, um, oh gosh, Mike Hausman. Mike, Mike, Mike Hausman. I'm terrible with names tonight. Mike Hausman representing the um, Parks Division and Bob Preston representing the Chamber. And I'm pleased to have Jason Bachon. Mm -hmm. Is that how I say it? That's good. Yeah. Uh, with us this evening. Uh, he's the town planner, and we also have uh, Representative uh, Emmerich with us tonight. So, um, I know that there are a couple of other representatives that said that they were coming, but um, since you're, I guess we should do public comment first. Is there anyone in the public that would like to comment? Otherwise, we'll go right to the uh, appointments. And I would invite uh, Representative Emmerich to the table, please. <coughs> Again, welcome. And would you like to share with us um, any of the bills that you have in Concord that may have an impact of some sort um, on Hampton Beach in particular? Well, hopefully they all will. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I filed four bills this year uh, after meeting with some uh, business owners primarily at the beach. Uh, one bill uh, was a refiling of sorts. It was a Senator Stiles bill from last term uh, that had to do with part of the room and meals tax coming back to the towns or municipalities where it was collected in proportion to how much they collect. Right now the room and meals are, are uh, divided around the state based on population. And uh, Hampton represents about 1.1% of the state's population, but we generate about 2.5% of the room and meals tax. So what it, what it boils down to is if, if the stars all align and the revenues all come in, uh, we, could, we could have a, a rebate, if you will, of about $125,000. Uh, so it's, it's a fairly complicated formula because there's a whole bunch of people that get in line in front of the cities and towns to take a piece of this and a piece of that uh, to go. It, part of it pays for the, the uh, reconstruction at the beach. Part of it pays for uh, the, uh, I, I still say dread, even though it's not dread anymore. Uh, and, and so it's kind of complicated. But basically it boils down to $5 million if there's enough receipts divided up proportionally based on who paid it. That's the essence of the bill. Uh, I don't know if it's going to make it out of ways and means. They weren't overly receptive. I don't. I had to leave because I had another hearing. But I don't. Did you? Did you have? Did they ask you any questions that were? I I, I did stay for the whole hearing, and um, I got the same sense that you had that they were not overly receptive of it. I mean, I think they were pleased that your legislation uh, was not taking away from right. current communities. But I thought I think that they thought it was a little complex to move forward. That was my sense that I right. got. But I'm hope, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> and I, and I well, that was that was my sense too I, because I, I know, didn't think that I thought the questionings. Well, part of it was having to do with HB two, and when they don't, we don't really distribute the full forty percent that the towns are supposed to get. We only do twenty five percent, so that's when you start getting in the weeds. Yeah, uh, especially where the um, municipality. Um, Lobbyist came in and said that until we get to 40 percent, she would like to see um, it just stay with the way that it is until everybody gets the 40 percent share. So, 
So I don't know. I mean, that's the, I don't know when the work session is on that. I didn't see it in the calendar today, but I don't know. Uh, that's that, that's one bill, and, and and as the chairman the chair says, it's kind of a jump ball because some people kind of were a little warm to it, and some people were. Eh. But I didn't I didn't feel a lot of animosity, and I didn't feel a lot of love. So <laughs> it could go either way. Uh, another bill uh, was to establish a study committee uh, for the construction of a parking facility at Hampton Beach. Uh, the reason I asked for a study committee when I went to the Public Works uh, Committee on this. They said, well, isn't this something you can do on your own? I said, well, we probably could, and we have ongoing dialogue, but I, th I think the idea that are, there is a study committee gives it a little more formality so that when we're working with, with state and town people, then at least there's a report going to come out at the end of this. Uh, so they were fairly receptive. It was actually a very good meeting. I, I think once they understood why we wanted to do it, and I said, this this parking garage could end up on town property. It doesn't necessarily have to be state property. I'm not going into this to say we're going to put it down there and it's got to be four stories high. I'm going into this to saying what do we need and where can it go? Uh, so that's, I, I think that helped a little bit by saying that the town is involved. We have been looking at the 10-year the plan and a, you know, a, a, a park and ride out where the uh, Route 1 and 101 intersect. I said, so we have been having dialogue about the concept of parking. Uh, but we would really look, to, look like to look at a, a garage and see, can it pay? Can it, can it work out? And so I, I think that one may have legs. Well, um, Re Representative uh, Edgar is, sits on that committee yes. and is also a co-sponsor, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the, an, another one... Uh, had to do with adding hotels uh, to the revitalization uh, RSA. Currently, the revitalization is focused primarily on land, development of, of commercial land, and redevelopment of commercial buildings. And so some of the, and what I wanted to do was add uh, hotels and motels to that. Uh, the reason well, some of the some of the questioning had to do with well, isn't that a commercial building? And and I can say sure, it's a commercial building, but it's not specified. So I, I would like to be specified to say hospitality, hotels, motels. Uh, otherwise, it looks like it's not permitted yet; it's still forbidden. So it was just an, an enhancement of the existing regulation. Uh, actually, I got a lot of good comments from other. Uh, members of the committee who said, gee, that could work for us, too. So it, it was, uh, excuse me. Um, so that one, but that one, I think, uh, could have a, a probability of making it through because it, it didn't cost anybody anything, and it can be <laughs> helpful. And, uh, it's an elective. Uh, uh, And I think you, you you testified on that. That you did a very good job. Thank you very much. That was that was excellent uh, uh, because it it kind of defined. I think I, I love the economic ecosystem. That was dynamite because uh, that kind of uh, your testimony was basically summing up that it's kind of a special place. You know, we got to have people staying in hotel rooms to go to the restaurants, and if the whole beach turns into condominiums, then the restaurants go away because there are no more people staying in the hotels where you can't cook, you know, so there was, a, there was a whole bunch of information, I think, that was very well delivered that they hadn't even thought about. Very much so. Yeah, so I think you did a very good job, uh, Mr. Ladd. Uh, the fourth bill had to do with uh, insurance. Uh, presently, a lot of the business owners, uh, particularly at the beach, have to use sur surplus line insurance. Uh, that's like Lloyd's of London and, and, and the like. I'm not all that familiar with this topic, so I had to do a little learning. Uh, apparently, the uh, the high risk uh, insurance uh, is about four percent of what's written in the state, and so I thought, well, if four percent's what's what is high risk insurance, uh, let's let's say two percent of it should come from uh, U.S. carriers, and that was basically what the legislation was about. Once I saw it in writing and came to talk to the selectmen about it, 
and they questioned it as far as how do you how do you do that? It was kind of like, duh, yeah, you're right. How do you do that? How do you distribute so that everybody, all the U.S. carriers that are in New Hampshire get two percent of their portfolio in high risk? And it's like this looks like a great government engineering failure. So what I did with that bill is I actually introduced it and recommended an expedient to legislate. You didn't put it to a study? Pardon me? You didn't recommend a study on that? No. No, I, I just think it's too complicated. Once, once the, the light went on about how do, you, how do you make that happen, it became a whole mechanical problem of how do you make sure every carrier that's U.S. flag, so to speak, gets 2% of their portfolio in high risk. You know, what if they had 1.8 percent? What do you cancel their license? You know, I, 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 I don't know what the rules would be on something like that, but it looked like a really bad idea. I mean, I mean Tracy, the other line too is, is the cost because, you know, if something is in a surplus carrier, it might be at a very um, decent cost as opposed to, you know, what a, a U.S. carrier or, or, or what I call a regional carrier. Sure. You know, so. You know, you weigh that out, too. Well, I think what, what you just described is called free market. Yeah. And I like free market, so that was one of the reasons, the underlying reasons that I, I pulled it. I mean, I, I TL'd. I just, the free market's taking care of this. The, the, the business owner that suggested this said it would be nice not to have an additional carrier. I thought, well, okay. But when, once, once you pull back the outer there's layers. A lot, there's a lot more to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think that one's going to go forward. I, have, I, have, I haven't ever seen a committee ought to pass a bill that the prime sponsor says we ought to make it inexpedient to legislate. No, so that's, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Hopefully it's dead. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. We're, we're right, at the, right at the beginning of the process. This was the introduction of bills, public hearings, and now the, all of the committees have their subcommittees and have to have work sessions. So. Uh, the votes will probably start happening two or three weeks from now because it's either March 1st or March 15th. These bills have to be out of committee. Any uh, of the uh, commissioners have a question for Representative? It sounds like you're doing a really good job and you've come up with some ideas that I haven't heard mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Congratulations Thank you. for thinking out of the box. Well, as, as you said earlier, um, when Mr. Ladd came up to testify, it really is beneficial for someone from the town that yep. is involved. Uh, he came in as a commissioner from the beach, and um, I think they highly respected that yep. and um, li really listened to what he had to say. I mean, he had a lot of good things to say, but they were really had him tuned in. I hope you know. my wife's listening now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, but I tell you, the economic ecosystem, wow, that, that, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> if you would just sit there for a minute, sure. because I know both Representative Cushing and uh, Representative uh, Edgar responded back to say that they would be here. Evidently, they may still be in Concord. I don't know. I know that some committees were going late tonight. Um, they had several bills that they were um, executing. I, I know. The, what, uh, what did I hear? I heard that. Health and Human Services were executing 14 bills, so hmm. I mean it, it, they could be stuck there. But one of the um, things that Representative Edgar had put in was another view of the meals and rooms tax. Do you want to speak to well, that? Well, I, I can speak to the extent that I understand. Basically, uh, it's it's allowing lo local communities to uh, ch charge either a dollar or a percentage per room night uh, consumed. Let's say it's a dollar a night. So the hotel adds a dollar a night onto the uh, bill, and that ends up coming to Hampton. Now, what's happened, uh, based on a couple of emails today, is originally that was going to go through the DRA, Department of Revenue Administration, and they were going to take a 2% or 3% fee or whatever, and then it would come back to Hampton back to the towns where or cities and towns where it comes from uh, apparently one of the members of ways and means has put in a, a is putting in a non-germane amendment that basically says it's up to the cities and uh, the municipalities to collect that do that those the dollars whatever they are so that the hotel or motel would collect the, these fees and then remit them directly to the town uh, I guess tax collector or whoever 
And what is the auditing process in that? Well, see, that was my response back to Mike, because I said, I think you better talk to Fred about this, because right now we've got a process. We know what the amount of money due is. We send the bills out, or the town does, and knows what they have to collect. Now we're going to go to a, a system of how many room nights are being rented, who's going to audit it, do we know if they sent us the money or not? Do we know if they're even collecting it or not? So it changed the whole personality and responsibility of our tax collector. And I don't, I, I think that needs a little more expo exploration. Were you able to stay for the, the rest of that hearing and hear the remarks from the lodging industry? I didn't, no. They were not at all supportive of it. So I don't, I, I don't know where it is, but I, I know that the Almy is putting in this, this, uh, non-germane amendment but I she probably has two hotels in the whole town you know and, and probably her brother runs one of them. who knows but it's like <laughs> I don't think she has any idea what a town like Hampton or Portsmouth or Manchester or Nashua with hundreds of hotel room nights trying to keep track of that I just it, DRA has enough trouble and that's what they do for a living and there's a whole army of them but tr having that each municipality getting in the collection business and auditing business. I don't know if that's going to be a really good idea. Well, I thank you very much for coming in. My pleasure. It's been a big help. Have a good evening. And good luck in all in the success you. of all your bills. We'll keep Except you one. <laughs> Except one. Well, we know one, one's dead, hopefully. Tracy, if we could go back to that one minute um, as far as collecting. Yes. Instead of a 9% tax, if you had a 9.01 rate, that money could go up, and they would the state would collect it based on on what somebody's volume would be. Right. So it wouldn't be a one percent; it'd be a fraction of a percent. Right. 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 So, and then I think if you did that, I think it would be important to to try to pick the season. You know, for July and August, when we're generating all this stuff, and which is what we're trying to pay for. You know, then then you could add it on because that's when we're getting our highest rates. Mm -hmm. But in the winter time. You know, they're barely making a living. Some of them are just open to keep the, the heat going. Well, that's a new wrinkle. Right? Yeah, so, true. you know, you, you you wouldn't be fair because, you know, you look at some of these motels, you'll say the main sale. I'll, I'll just say they pay $50,000. Now, they, you're going to have some operators that are responsibly going to say, well, all right, how can we contribute? How can we help? All right? So, but they already pay a lot of money for the rest of the year. So I think we just want to hit the maybe perhaps the high season, whatever that may be. But how would that impact the people up north? Oh, no. They have different high seasons. You yes, know, I they mean, have a skiing season. Like or how it hits the corporate, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But I just, just to add a number, to throw something on the town tax collector, you know, we're, we're reinventing the wheel. And, and I think that could be a problem. You know, whereas if you just took a very tiny percentage. Well, the, the original bill was going to the DRA. Yeah. And that's, I just saw the thing about the, the, the amendment today. Mm -hmm. uh, my, that was my response. I, I, I said, I think this is a bigger problem than the solution. Well, then you don't have to do it on per room nights. You could say, well, we're just trying to hit a buck a day or something, just some, some fraction, whatever that fraction is. Right. You know. That's not my bill, but I, I will pass that along. Okay. Okay. Isn't there already a provision that they can go like an extra half or a quarter percent if it's uh, voted on by the town? Some towns that do that? I mean, no, it's been mentioned and talked about at the board. I don't of believe so. Before. Portsmouth introduced that uh, last. Uh, they term. do do it in other areas, though. Maybe other states. I'm other states sure. do other absolutely, states. but we. I don't think it's ever uh, become part of the RSAs here. Yeah, yeah. They should look how they do it at other uh, in other areas, and why reinvent the wheel? Well, if you go, if you stay at a hotel in New York, you you, you get your bill. Then you got state tax, local tax, yeah. city tax, street tax. You know. Of course, the big thing these days is the resort fee. That you pay it almost everywhere in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. And you know. There they fluctuated according to if there's a high price of uh, electricity or whatever. And I don't know if that's ever been considered, but that that's might be a better model. Very common um, practice today. And it's basically, in most places, it's $25 or, of course, bigger hotels can use it and then you don't get to use the spa if you don't, you know, it usually includes something else that you get to. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. 
an added value to it. But they do it almost everywhere in Vegas. Well, we could add night swimming. Yeah, <laughs> in the ocean. <laughs> Thank you very much okay. for coming in. Thank you. Well, that takes care of the uh, appointments, I guess, until um, we hear from the other representatives. Um, to review the minutes of November 17, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at them or not. Mm -hmm. If Jason did these minutes, they are excellent. It <laughs> was a busy meeting. It, it certainly looked it. Do I have a motion of any sort, or are you not ready to make a motion? No, I'll, put it, I'll put it out there. I'll make a motion to we approve the minutes. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion on it? If not, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes. And now for uh, December's minutes. Uh, I understand that you guys all got one in the mail. <laughs> oh, not in the mail, on your email. Did you get one? Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion on that? Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Questions? Discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? <coughs> Too quickly, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Treasurer's report, um, Mr. Hausman. Yes, so the Hampton Beach Commission Fund has a current balance of $9,140.43. And have we received any bills? No, we have? just we recently paid one $488 bill for the past secretarial. That's the only bill. Okay. I haven't All seen right. any up. And you want to give an, uh, an update on the logo? The logo. So, yeah, we're we're developing, you know, DNCR now, Natural and Cultural Resources. We're getting our new logo together. It's finished. We're, so we'll get that, and I know we'll we'll send that to you so we can get it on the letterhead here. But we do have a... Like I said, make sure it's that size. Yeah, so I can just, just this size. And paste. Yep. <laughs> What's it look like, Mike? Same thing, Same just thing. different uh, just different wording. Oh, you guys worked hard on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions for Mike? No? Uh, old business. Priorities. Would you take a look at your the listing that you had for your priorities? And I uh, just want to know if there's any desired action on any of them, or um, if you want to take one over the other to, um, that you think is most important to work on? or. And any changes that you want to make to it? My understanding is you broke it into two groups, top priority and the second priority. Well, I can tell you that um, yesterday when there was a lot of uh, rain, that Ocean Boulevard was, the water was uh, at least eight inches thick deep. Including, I believe it was the state that probably came in and pushed it away. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. It might, might have been DOT. DOT. Probably, yeah. Guess, they yeah. came in and tried to plow it away. But, um, you know, it just continues to be a major problem. Kevin Schultz was down there and he found it almost impassable. I was talking right. to him today and he I mentioned it to me. Say, though, when I get to the report. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it continues to be a problem, not to mention all of the concerns that people have about the, you know, I, I wasn't here for that storm, but I can understand how there's so much frustration that goes on with people that 
mm-hmm. have the national national na- natural phenomenon. But in the case of yesterday, that's you know not from the marsh. It was low right. tide when All that right. happened. <clears throat> we had a lot of rain. Yeah, and I, I'm sure that the ice has something to do with it, clogging the drains even more so, even though they don't work very well to begin with. Okay. Um. And I think we've brought that up a lot in every meeting that you yeah. talk about drainage. To, yeah. So it, it's one of the top priorities that we, we've been discussing for quite some time. The, um, any other comments or anything on the priorities? Well, I think flooding and drainage has to be right at the top of the list. Of well, you, kn- you know, going on. my understanding is that you've been working on updating the master plan on everything related to transportation and safety and so forth. And the other pieces that I found in the master plan, which I carry with me to all of these meetings, um, is the environmental issues. And I think we can really discuss the flooding and so forth um, when we take a look at environmental issues down here and what's happened and what changes may happen and whatever the board decide your board decides to um, move forward or the planning board or any of those but I think that's one of the things that we really can focus on when, um, when we finish this first section of the rewrite at the um, <clears throat> meeting we had uh, at the state parks last last week uh, the governor said he was going to try to move up the Ocean Boulevard up one year, if it was possible, on that 10-year plan. And I think that we should continue to support that because in part of that, there's a lot of drainage issues in there, all right? Mm-hmm. And the other piece to that puzzle, you know, and it's more that, that your contacts or, or Bill Watson, is I think we should be continue to look out for additional money to go from Boar's Head up to when it kind of road, and well, that's when we can address. Yeah. I did have a meeting with uh, Mr. Rose this week because yeah. I figured rather than ask all of you to keep explaining to me what's been going on, I would try to get him to f- fill me in, and so I will tell you how my meeting with him went and what he foresees. Let me get to the new business. Um, any other comments? And if you, any of you have any uh, direct contacts with any of the um, rep- representatives that, that sit on Transportation Committee uh, in the Senate, and it would be Public Works in the House, um, by all means give them a call and tell them you know, how important it is to get it moved up. I would just like to say that, and uh, maybe this is part of what you're going to discuss, um, that I'm sure the town would be willing to work with, with the ideas about the long-term studies of the drainage because there's whatever the state does do on Ocean Boulevard, the town, I'm sure, wants to tie into it in some way, particularly from coming down off Boar's Head where it's a hill, for instance, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of water that comes down off there. Unfortunately, there's been so many... People, that's one of the areas where people have done a lot of things that they probably shouldn't have done, like, you know, really heavily paved areas and built uh, decks and stuff like that. So there's a lot of water that drains off that needs to be channeled. And I know that the town is looking at some point, you know, they'd like to be part of the solution to do something with the drainage. So they would like to be, you know, somehow kept informed of what's happening and, you know, how they might be able to do something with it and be part of it. Okay. Isn't there an article on the current, on the warrant that will be in uh, March for a $100,000 drainage study to look at the west side streets in the Gentian Road area? It's for, uh, it's for everywhere, I believe. Yeah. It's, the, at the beginning, that's what it was supposed to be, but it's supposed to be con- Everything from the, I hope it still reads that way, but that's the idea was it was for well, I guess all the point is it's important that that gets passed, yeah. Yeah. you know, that 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 you know, and that's the town side. And if we can do something, you know, through the DOT or, or dread or whatever you are, Mike, <laughs> yeah, uh, he just doesn't want to, to be called sure dancer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just gonna call you Parks, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's it, yeah. 
Okay. Um, the status of the assistant uh, to take notes. I had a very nice conversation with Christina, and um, she said that she had someone that was willing to take our notes but wanted to do them from the tape, did not want to come to the meetings. And so I talked with the vice chair, and both he and I felt that um, it's important to have a body here to um, make adjustments to the minutes and to ask questions if they're not clear and stuff. Um, so, um, and she wanted $150. And, um, For each meeting? For each meeting? That's and, a lot to be so um, I, uh, I asked if she would come. You know, I said, go back and please ask her if she would come. And um, that, that was not something that she wanted to do. So. My concern a little bit too is, I mean, this is on TV tonight, but sometimes we get backed up with meetings, and we might end up at the, we've ended up at the police station, which is typically not taped, or um, sometimes at the village district room, we're taped or not taped. I can't remember. But it's not live, but yeah. it's, it's not usually live, taped. But it's right. Yeah. So. Um, if anyone has any ideas of anyone who might be available, uh, would you please get them to me, or get them to Christina? And I don't know whether it has to be approved by the, the town, because well, I, I guess that so. person would have to be put on the payroll temporarily or something, a, um, a temp or something. Is that correct? I've never heard of anyone being turned down that wanted to do it. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> So if you could, each of you, if you could reach out. Uh, I reached out to uh, the young gal that I thought would be very good, but her schedule just doesn't allow her to, to do that. Um, well, and I said, it's <coughs> one meeting a month, you know. It's, it's only too bad one they couldn't get someone from the high school that could use the money. The meetings never, this particular uh, group, we never go very late. Yeah. Um, but I you think that there would be some type of opportunity for somebody that's not necessarily a professional. Yeah. So the, I know we they threw out a number of, of 150. What what's a if we find somebody, what's a number that is doable? A hundred, hundred and a quarter, hundred. I think hundred is more than sufficient. Okay, I don't know what other. I thought we. Get. I th I understood John to say that we were paying. You were paying, um, <coughs> 125. But okay. I may be mistaken. Hmm. Yeah, the meetings, said I've never seen them go to thir three. I've never seen one of these meetings go three hours. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Actually, I'm not even sure they've gone two hours. Well, the last meeting this went one long may not because, even go long. because we, had the, <laughs> well, we had the big presentation with, yeah. with uh, the, uh, um, the plan, and that went on for a good couple hours. I remember, but that was uh, totally yeah. unusual. Okay. Um, so. Keep your ears, eyes open, and you can talk to all your ladies when they come in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number, number three on that uh, action uh, on Chief Sawyer's presentation you did in um, that was in November. Um, it was really interesting because I John gave me a bunch of the notes and everything else, so I picked up the November meeting and I read through it, but I was reading November. 17 of 2016 rather than November 17, 16 of 17. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, if, if there's anything that you want to do to address that, that's fine, but otherwise I'd just take it right off the uh, agenda. Yeah, I uh, what, what he was asking at the time, because I did read it, um, was to support uh, one of the warrant articles that was on the 16 uh, warrant, so it really doesn't make much sense. I so that's yeah, my I can't first remember mistake. What the only time I remember, Bob, correct me, but Chief Chief was in with, you know, talking about fences yeah. and that type of stuff. It's in the, it's in the. It was in okay. 16 minutes. <laughs> What is the current um, feeling of uh, the fences? And I've heard different people commenting that some people just think it's absolutely wonderful. 
And then there's other people that say it's not practical. In fact, I thought I heard that the state wasn't so happy with it. I'll speak it, to that, too. No, I, yeah. I don't think we were. That the, the was put up on the roads to keep yeah. the best. No, I thought it were, I, I thought it helped with traffic, yeah. getting out of here, and, you know, keeping people on, yeah. the, on the sidewalks. And, I think it's a good idea yeah. also. I think more people yeah, I think liked, liked it. it. Yeah. It, it stopped the pedestrians from mm -hmm. going, crossing wherever they want. Um, I think at some point we ought to get more, we ought to get the jackets to go on them so they look a little better instead of looking so yes, it's commercial. I, I think some people felt that it didn't look good, but like I try to tell people that, you know, in the long term when something is done with the road, that is to give the people the idea that they need to cross um, where they need to cross. And, and this does do that. Mm -hmm. I think it helps that. I know the chief was just all for it because yeah, he it, it solved a lot of his well, manpower and, and those type of things because they had to cross at this crosswalk. They couldn't. He said the only thing that was seemed to what was to be a lot of work was um, couldn't you couldn't believe how much the the um, shaking of cars and whatever would move that fence in and out and they were constantly because that sits on the road. On yeah, top. and he didn't know if there's. I remember he said he didn't know if there's a way that it could be secured in a way or something yeah. like that because he said it's amazing with all the big trucks in the morning or that type of stuff that they shimmy out and they got to be pushed back type of a thing because it's I, really i think he also said that it, it helped keep the traffic moving it yeah. was it yeah that's definitely definitely, definite. definitely you know five minutes that. off you know from yeah. going through because once you can get going you didn't have to stop every 20 feet well vehicles mm -hmm. will stop when they see a crosswalk and a lot of people uh, and if people are in behind a barricade they know they can keep moving because no one's coming out in mm -hmm. front of them yeah yeah so all in all that yeah it was good it's a good idea the feedback we got at the precinct was very positive about good. the fencing good good okay new business the uh, current legislation now I know that uh, the legislation that Representative uh, Emmerich presented tonight um, probably does not fall within our purview as far as the um, master plan is concerned. But I would just like to encourage people if individually, if you feel that you want to go and speak to any of those bills, and there were six of them, actually. Um, and I'll read the numbers in case anyone is interested. Uh, House Bill 1248 was the parking study, which has already been heard. Um, and all four of our representatives that live in Hampton uh, were co-sponsors on that. So uh, it, it just shows you that this, the legislators actually do work together on um, things of interest to them. Then there was House Bill 1491. That was the meals and room stacks that uh, Re Representative Emmerich um, spoke about. And um, that was supported by uh, three of our town reps and plus the um, extra uh, t representative, um, Terry Rio, Rio, Rio Tilton. Yeah. Tilton. 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 Rio Tilton. And also the senator. So you had several people sign on to that one. Who? This, um, House Bill 1609 mm -hmm. was the meals and room stack that uh, Representative Edgar had in on the extra money. And all of those have been heard. Um, so you won't have that chance, but I think it's important for people to be advised of what's going on. House Bill uh, 1611 is an offshore wind bill that uh, Representative Cushing put in, and uh, it was already heard, and I believe the exacting on that bill was yesterday, and I don't know what the result of it was. I was hoping he would be here tonight to tell us. Um, uh, House Bill uh, 1619 is the uh, one that deals with uh, RSA 79E, which is the tax deferment on uh, as another option uh, for local boards to decide whether or not to uh, accept a law or anything else. Uh, that's very much a locally controlled bill. House Bill 1696, um, Representative Cushing put in, it was to, um, it was about the Capital Improvement, Hampton Beach Capital Improvement Fund, and um, 
that had everybody on it. Uh, and I don't think it's gone anywhere. I think that's already been exact too. So we'll just have to keep our eye on that. Um, as I said, it's not anything that falls in our purview, but as a resident of the area, I, I think it's important to know that. Uh, the update of the master plan review and future actions. I, as I said, I did meet with um, Mr. Rose um, the other day and asked him to fill me in on what had transpired, where things were at, and what the next steps were going to be. And um, I was going to ask um, Mr. Watson to pronounce the name of H V H B because Venice. Hey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because you, at the last meeting, you guys kept talking like that was a, just a common word, and I kept saying, "Who are they talking about? What are they talking about?" <laughs> so that's the contract that's doing the work yeah. for for um, the project. Okay, um, and I asked him to uh, particularly tell me what was going to happen next. And so he said he anticipates um, a so-called finished project based on what you did at the November meeting, to come back to um, the board here uh, in March. So he would like to, be on, he's going to like it to be on our calendar for March to make that presentation. Um, and then he was hopeful that we would be able to uh, hold or host a um, public hearing in April and invite uh, particularly the planning board, the selectmen, um, any other elected officials in town, but also the residents. And if we can get the message out to the residents so that they can come in and, and see what the concepts are um, for moving forward, that would take place in April. So um, maybe we can chat about that. Um, I mean, a regular building. meeting or a separate meeting? Probably. Well, I don't know. What do you think? What do you want to do? Do you want to do it in place of a meet? I mean, in place of our meeting, uh, if there isn't much going on, or do you want to do it separately? What, and and can we do it here? Is this um, big enough? I don't know if this one's big enough. Unless, big enough. although it's here, it's here, you're on channel 22. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the best or place the is the seashell. Mm -hmm. We should probably try to get channel 22 in the seashell. When we did it here and invited people before, that was big enough. Was it? Yeah, there were a lot of people. Unfortunately, never, not that many people end up coming. But well, I would it, like to really reach out to people and try to get them mm -hmm. here. It, it would yeah. be helpful if we could put something out beforehand, some you know, schematics yeah. of yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. So well, uh, it is available on the website. Yeah. Um, and that's the other thing I was going to ask. Um, Mr. Watson to give us directions as to exactly where on the website one would find it to make it easy for someone to access. So I mean you're thinking, the, yeah, sorry, you're thinking this board and the selectmen and the village district? The village district. Because then, you know, that, that sort of goes and back the planning to... planning board. And the planning. I mean, that sort of goes back to when way back when we're at the Ashworth with the big yeah. banquet tables. Yeah. You've got a lot of officials there. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, hopefully they would come out to give their final, you know, give their comments on the final concepts. That might be a seashell thing. Because that room's big enough to handle all that. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. We should, Rick, maybe we should talk with the town manager now, mm -hmm. you know, to say, hey, this is what our conceptually we're thinking of, you know, inviting not only the selectmen and the planning, you know, just to try to get a number on these things and, and see what he might have to say that, you know, where meeting place might work or? I don't think he has a problem with it, but I will tell you there was a lot of complaints about the meeting the other day that the, you couldn't hear. And where? And, uh, the one that where the governor was at. Oh, up there. There were at least five people that went to the town, sent uh, messages of complaining about hearing it on the there town website. Oh, really? There weren't many microphones. Yeah. There wasn't a, yeah. wasn't a, like, you know, a podium where someone could talk. Yeah, that was. It wasn't mic'd up right. Evidently, yeah, it's kind of like if you had somebody that had a real deep voice and that, you'd probably catch that. But like the quieter one, you, you know, it just mm -hmm. it just didn't. You were talking in a microphone, maybe over where Bob is, and uh, it just didn't work. I don't know. I don't know. You can ask. Him yeah, and they could always use the um, junior high too. The cafeteria. It too. It's bigger. It is, and that holds a lot of people. A lot of people. 
<laughs> where, where does, I mean, Hampton Academy? That's usually where they do the, uh, you know, when they have a, to discuss all the Warren articles before they're all put together. The budget committee does yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it works pretty well. Yeah, that room's not, that room's still open. It's not being destroyed with construction, so. Right. Mm-hmm. Or the other one, you know, as long as they can get the um, audio right. Yeah. Okay, that's something that I think that maybe. We can work the on. two of us will catch up on yeah. it, yeah. Um, okay, and what else did he say? Then he said, um, then they would come back with a more or less finished product, pro- product for the master plan in June. Um, late June, he said. So I don't know whether that will make our June meeting or whether that would mean that we would have to have a meeting in July. So I just want to give you a heads up on that because it's due in August, so it's got to be done. It's got to be finished. So that's basically how the transportation uh, unit of the master plan Mm -hmm. is going to be moved forward. Um, At that point, they will know actually the cost. He said what Mr. Rose told me was that he said, you know, we're really zeroing down in on what the actual cost is going to be, so it's going to be much easier to move forward when we know what the what the cost will be. That's it. Sounds, sounds good to me. He was concerned about the $8 million. He said he, um, and I said, well, tell me, how far does that, where is that supposed to go? Well, how far is that supposed to go? And he said it's, it's to look at the property from the bridge to High Street. And I said, um, well, you know, we've had a lot of issues around the water and stuff north of Boar's Head. Um, will, that, will that definitely be part of it? And he said the 275000 is will be a concept, a preliminary engineering design uh, on the limits of the project and what can be done. And I said, I want to know that you are going to be able to fit in from Boys Head at least to Winnicott, kind of, if not to High Street, and also look at the drainage because that is a huge issue. The drainage of the whole beach is a huge issue, and I don't know where, where you're going to drain it to. You can't drain it into the marsh, and you can't drain it into the ocean. What about the river? <laughs> I mean, is it possible to, to do the river? I'm, I'm sure DES would have some comments on that. But I said, you know, um, I know that there is some drainage now that was put in in the last couple of years by the state. And it, I'm not an engineer, but you don't put exits eight feet under the sand because those doors don't flap open with all that weight on them. So why don't you just use a huge, huge... Um, tunnel and just take all of the water right down and put it out underneath the new bridge into the river. And that way you'd be able to, and do it in two so that if one gets clogged up, I mean, when it gets to the end, break it into two so that you can shut one off and still ac- still have access to it. And he was just smiling at me, but um, <laughs> um, we've got to do something about the drainage. There's, there's, something's got to be done, and if the town's doing the study, maybe, maybe that will bring all of that to light mm-hmm. and uh, have that in place. But they plan to go forward with looking at that. So I've been trying to look after you, Rick, and mm-hmm. make sure that they look at your, your, yeah, thank you, your water over there. Um, As I said, he was concerned that eight million may not do everything that's going to be necessary for the bridge to uh, High Street. And I said, "Well, then you've got to be looking for some more money somewhere." I think that was the bridge to Boar's. I, mean, I think that was the bridge to Boar's Head, the eight million, and then we were going to continue to look for more money. Is that what you think? No, the no, we were supposed to get eight million in to in 2018, and that includes. Th- 275,000 for um, engineering for north of Boar's Head. Okay, engineering, yeah. Yeah, engineering. Mm-hmm. These are all concepts in engineering. It's, it's, it, I, the 275,000 is definitely not going to pay for much other than an engineering. 
Well, and I think the key of it is, is they, if there's long, whatever they're doing, they need to keep in mind what's going to happen after it's added to, like engineering for the future. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can't just do it and then all of a sudden have to refigure it again later on. I agree. I agree. And I think that's what the town would like to see. So something that they could make some plans of putting some drains in that will t take some of that water that comes off of Boar's Head also. So that is basically what he said to me. As far as the next steps go, that the, um, the master plan should be updated um, with its concept in August. Do you think he can make these, I mean, these deadlines of the March meeting and an April meeting? Because you said he hopes to make that. Well, he that's what's on, on the schedule. And okay. he said that um, he had a conversation with um, BHB um, the other day, and they, they're right on, on schedule. They're on schedule. And um, they were the ones that requested the March and the um, April. And the okay, so that's a lot more yep. definite than yep. I, I think we can. Okay. Yep. So, and then when we're done with that, then in the fall we can talk about the other pieces of the master plan to see what we might want to do about okay. getting that updated. Anyone have any comments, questions, or concerns about that whole thing? What I don't do you, know what if it quite fits in on this, but one idea that I've been thinking about, having just gone to a lot of tourist areas and traveling, one thing I noticed that even in these third world countries, no one throws trash around like they do at Hampton Beach. You know, wh when are we going to start taking that into consideration of getting people to put trash in buckets? Everywhere that I recently traveled to, even countries that are very poor, they, people don't throw the trash possibly where you go to places where they live they throw trash around but actually where their resort areas are people don't throw pizza boxes all over the place and I think in the future they're gonna we need to address that is that something that the parks does on their barrels does it say you know put the what trash to put in? in yeah yeah I mean we have trash and recycling barrels that I think we could maybe mark them a little bit better, but yeah, I mean, we identify them as trash and recycling. Yeah, it just seems like people don't feel that they have to do it. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah, there any message? Big problem. Any yeah. message that you could put on there that you can think of that would in, in entice people to actually put their trash where it's <laughs> just, supposed to be? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a the, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the trash on the beach is yeah. just. I mean, how many yeah. tons of people, people leave it all over the place? It's, you know, it's. I think it's well identified. You know, the trash barrels are there. They're they're identified as as such, and yeah, people just sometimes choose not to use them, or you can't keep up with it. Too. Yeah, I think that's what the hardest yeah. problems. Yeah. Has the village district discussed this issue at all? Um, not extensively, but there's been some conversation about barrels on the beach. Mm -hmm. If the barrel could be designed in such a way, it wouldn't just be an opportunity for kids to move it around randomly or tip it over? I think the new generation of children are, you know, they are, just don't care. Some don't care, but on the other hand, they're pretty much trained to recycle oh, you know, okay. in school sure. and stuff like yeah. that. And, you know, we can only hope that they'll get better. My only concern with being down on the beach would be how often would they be able to get down there to empty them? Yeah. You know, that would be my well, that would be something that have to be factored. Right now, the beach is just a large dumpster for the community that comes to the beach. And you people do a great job, but you can't be sand raking it 24-7. Yeah. Yep. And even the way they have their truck going up and down the boulevard, it's going up and down the sidewalk. You've got two or three people working out of that truck, and, it's, and they're lifting barrels if they don't have the fancy equipment. You know, you can't very well have a kid run down to get the barrel mm -hmm. and bring it back. Maybe there's a way that somebody can think of some creative messaging or something. We have a whole seawall we could use for a billboard <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> Keep our beaches clean. You know, or even some type of a, a message sent from where the people buy the stuff. You know, uh, I, I don't really have any 
concrete idea, but there must be a way to let people know that they need to put this trash in the right receptacle at some point. Rather, McDonald's used to drag, uh, create a ton of trash. Um, maybe because it was all had the take McDonald's. out of the bags and all. Yeah, that stuff. I mean, it's it just I just don't see any other places where they do it like they do here. I'm not sure about Old Orchard Beach, but I believe it's not as bad as Hampton. Okay. Um, Just add a subset to that problem was dogs also. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what the solution to that is other than the state having a dog officer ticketing people who have the dogs on the beach at the wrong time of the year. For quite a while, the dog's situation was improved. Re, at, towards the end of this last summer, it was like it all resurfaced again. Yeah. For whatever reason. Well, you do have bags out, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we keep those, try to keep those full, yeah, for people to use. Yeah. I think it's a part of it's just that the beach is so successful that there's... Yeah. We have more population. But there are not supposed to be dogs. It's not, not supposed to be dogs on the beach, right? No. At times of the year, yeah. It's the sidewalks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they're all over. They're supposed to be leashed when they are, and yeah. So basically, in the off season, it's all right for me to walk my dog on the beach. Yeah, if they're leashed. Okay. There's a lady that's living in one of the condos. I believe it's the one that's near Mrs. Mitchell's, and she's a uh, uh, city commissioner or consular or whatever they call them in Worcester. And she can't. She's one. <clears throat> she's one of my clients now, and she just can't believe that people throw the trash. That wouldn't happen in Worcester, according to her. <laughs> so I don't know how to control it, really. But I know there's been talk in the past about, you know, having uh, fining power or whatever, and I don't. I guess the state doesn't look well on that. I've heard you discuss that actually. Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, it's probably not in the master plan, but it is a concern. So can share it with the uh, service district board or the select board or mm-hmm. one or the other. Okay, um, one of the things that um, Christina mentioned to me, because I went to her to ask her about where do I store all these minutes? And, you know, I mean, am I just to keep them in my house or they, should they be in some place? And she said, well, you need to get make sure that the uh, town clerk has a copy. But would you think about binding them, binding a year's worth of minutes. And I said, she said, that's what they do here. Yeah, that's right. And um, I said, what would that cost be? And she said, it's about $75 for a year's of bi- year of bindings. So I don't know if that was something you wanted to think about. Sure. Make us lots of money. Pardon me? That's where you have that money. $9,000, yeah. Yeah. Plus. Uh, Fred, says, Fred is big on that. He's Binding the one them? that put the, all of that program together, so he has more information. If yeah. All right. So you want me to look into that a little bit further, and we should just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Aren't they? Weren't, weren't we posting stuff on the town website or or the? Yeah, we do. I think be, so. Yeah. 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 So Christina I mean, there they are. So that's that's where they are electronically. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how long. They stay there, or is it every year? Or? I'm not sure how long we stay well, in town. There's one in there that's fairly old that I came across. I, I mean, I don't. Are we supposed to post them in there every every meeting? I suppose. It, I think well, so. Yeah. I think that that we should post them. Right. Every meeting. Is there a way to archive it on that system? It's that's supposed to be question. posted within five days of the meeting, too. Five business days. I can check with Fred and find sure. out what the town's um, <laughs> policy is. And I know that they've worked on it. It's, he's done it in the segments over the last couple of years. He, he's gone back and done a lot of things from the past. And they do like to have records of it because they do have, uh, for instance, there's things that Jason over there, uh, they there must have been a big flood at one point and there's been years of records that we don't have now and right. we're at a loss many times and Fran knows about that. Yep. Yeah. 
So they do like to have concrete records that can be referred to. So do you want me to look into it? And if it doesn't exceed no, 100 I, I think I just make a motion we should go ahead and do that. As long as it doesn't exceed, what, 100 bucks a year? Or? Sure. That's fine. I'll second it. <clears throat> OK. Questions? Sounds good to me. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. And maybe you could turn it over to the town and they would watch them in perpetuity or whatever. I don't really know, but okay. there must be a place where they're putting the rest of them. There must be. Um, in your packet, you will find a listing of the scheduling of the 2018 meetings. Um, Christina was very helpful with that. She has scheduled all of these already for this room. And uh, I said, well, what if we just, if we don't have a meeting in July and August or December? And she said, just call me and cancel it, and I'll take it off. So, um, but I would like to, I took her at her word and said, I like your idea. And so we have the room, unless okay, we get good. bumped out for some reason. But She's very efficient, and yeah. she's a very good uh, producer. She works constantly. She's never just sitting there. Yeah, she was very helpful. Very helpful. So, okay. Any other news to come before the board? If I may. You may. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, I wanted to touch on some of the things that have been happening in Hampton uh, in the last couple of weeks. And first of all, Rick, I'm going to apologize for being so aggressive or whatever at that particular meeting in my enthusiasm to support Nancy to continue all the good work that I think that this group has done I probably could have handled it a lot better so let me just oh, say I was just as enthusiastic about her I didn't so I like mean I'll anything. just I'll apologize and say I should have handled that better at recent meetings I heard I, I I was hearing lots of things about John Nyan. And we've all worked with John Nyan here for 10 years. But, you know, going back even longer, I can't think of many people, or I'll just say maybe John has worked as much as anybody I know in this town in the last 10, 12, 13 years. And I'm going back to the planning meetings we had at the Ashworth with the big banquet table full of ideas full of a room with people with dreams and other, the rest of the people said we were dreaming. And John and Nancy and many, many other people were there to help that seashell come along and it happened. And even now, you know, we're looking at working on Ocean Boulevard and then eventually, you know, who knows the bridge, you know. So I think it's important for this group and the town and the state to work together. So that brings me to the selectmen and this, the suit for, for whatever we, we want to call it. I actually haven't heard a number about, you know, what we're looking for. It's, um, we had a meeting at state parks and what we discovered at that meeting is we don't have a problem with state parks. State parks has had as good or better relationship as we've ever had. And that was the general consensus of that meeting. What we have, I think, is a tax issue. And we can talk about room and meals, or we can talk about whatever we want. But going back to the lawsuit, I haven't heard anything about how much our police cost or how much the fire cost. You know, maybe. I have those numbers. Maybe we should have some people, and the selectmen could say, we could have a group and kick things around ourselves, you know, saying, well, Let's have an opportunity to go back and talk to Chuck Lewis, the Senate President, or the Speaker of the House, or the Governor. But I would really hate to see a lawsuit undo a lot of the goodwill that, you know, we've all been working towards. All right? And I say this having voted for every single one of you five selectmen. I mean, I'll say it again. I voted for all of you. You know, I think that we can work together better. I really do. I don't think, you know, we all probably went over the line a little bit. I went over, everybody did. Let's just say that, you know, we could take a step back 
and, and try to you know work amongst ourselves somehow. Thank you. You're welcome. And I would take that as a Hampton Citizens request. I know that the town is looking at all 85 years that have gone by and they're investigating how things have gone all the way through the years. So it's not that they're not investigating and they're not in any, uh, you know, they're taking their time to come to some decisions. But there's a lot of records to review and they are reviewing them all, whatever that means. So. So you'll make a decision at next Monday night's meeting though, right? I'm not really sure, but I would assume that it will be talked about. Okay. But they are doing a lot of investigation, and it's taking a little longer than they thought. Okay. If I could, I'd like to speak to the same issue for a moment. As a citizen? Yes. I'm not trying. The, it seems to me regardless of how the suit comes out, it's now playing out somewhat, somewhat like a divorce, emotionally. But the end game is we're gonna to have to continue to live in the same house and sleep in the same bed. And we've got issues going forward, such as sea level rise, flooding, drainage, that are gonna require a degree of uh, cooperation with the state that a suit may get you know, in the way of. All human beings who are sued tend, tend to have some emotional animus toward the party bringing the suit, regardless of the merit of the suit. And so I, I would hope if the suit is filed that the town through council would consider at least through the Rockingham Superior Court if someone that's filed there file a motion to have it referred to mediation for our conciliation almost immediately so there'd be an opportunity to get a sense of whether it really needs to proceed beyond that point. And that's about where I stop. That's a message you may want to deliver to the selectmen at their next mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah, you ought to come to the uh, and talk to her in public comment. You, being a lawyer, understand it much more than I do. That's why I don't have a lot of the answers. Yeah. I do know that it's been said it would be a declaratory judgment. If it is that, a judge can find in favor of the state as well as in favor of the town. Uh, it's a kind of a roll of the dice. It's not a jury trial or declaratory judgment, if that's the nature of the proceeding. In my experience with litigation, it doesn't tend to end well. And it's guaranteed not to end well if the two, it's like two neighbors who fight over a fence. Then they have a litigation over the fight, but they continue to live side by side. It'll spill over in some anticipated sort of way that nobody anticipates or expects from some source, unfortunately. I know that I've noticed right from the beginning since when um, Chris Sununu became the governor that he brought it up. It got very little publicity, but I did see it at the very tail end of um, an article in the Hampton Union or the Seacoast media, whatever, that you know, right, he said right from the beginning that he felt there was merit to something different being done in Hampton. And when no one else was saying that, now there seems, with the talk of having something like a lawsuit, there has been much more of a focus on it. And I don't know exactly where that leaves it, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But I think for me, just as uh, one person, um, I question what can he do when um, I know how hard you worked. And I can remember. Well, the governor has a lot, has a much bigger platform than I had. <laughs> but I know, but remember all the votes? What were they? 21 to 1, 22 to 1, 23 to 1 in the Senate? It's like there's never been any traction. And that is very defeating. Well, he. I don't know if we should be discussing that meeting, but um, 
I will speak as a citizen uh, who sat through the meeting. Um, that he did say that he was open to looking at the meals and runs tax. He was open to uh, moving the A1, uh, 1A up on the, on the calendar. He was open to different things, but I don't know if that's what you're after, so I don't know if that is going to be of any benefit to anybody or not. So I think we ought to bring this meeting to a close. What? Oh, you wanted to speak? Yep, sorry. One more thing. Okay. Uh, February 8th. February 8th. Is uh, Doc's retirement party at the Ashworth. And I'm sure we'll see all this group here, but everybody's invited. This should be a fun night. Doc spent 17 years working on behalf of the chamber. And it'll be a good night to go and give him a little bit of thank you and a rousing. Absolutely. Absolutely. One other thing I wanted to ask about, too. Is there any uh, information about, there's been talk about having the offshore oil drilling for all the states except for Florida? Any of that have anything here in New Hampshire yet? I know the governor, I think I read somewhere where the governor was very opposed to that. So, um, and I read somewhere in the newspaper, I think recently, it's like uh, the Onassis deal that was back a few years ago. And so it probably would get fought the same way. Mm -hmm. So it would be something that we might, might want to keep an eye on in the future. Yeah. Motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. 814. Yeah. 813. Thank you very much. Thank you. You did a great job. Yeah. I missed